Warren Buffett is getting old. In fact, right now he's 93 years old. He's lived a long life. But apparently he's not too old to have his taxes hacked and sold to the vultures at ProPublica. That's what's happened over the past couple of months. Now, ProPublica is making a name for themselves by exposing all the dirty secrets of the ultra wealthy. And you may know them by some of their greatest hits, like when they went after Peter Thiel for making billions of dollars in his Roth IRA with PayPal shares. He used it legally, but of course he did it in such a smart way that he has a lot of tax-free gains there. ProPublica doesn't like that. They also exposed Ted Weschler and his Roth IRA growing to hundreds of millions of dollars basically exposing Ted Weschler for being a genius investor. Now ProPublica has turned their attention to the king himself, to Warren Buffett. They released a new article revealing that they've obtained hacked IRS documents of Warren Buffett's private trading. And then they're suggesting that Warren Buffett has traded against Berkshire Hathaway for his own benefit. And they say he's done so on a number of different occasions. How Warren Buffett privately traded in stocks that Berkshire Hathaway was buying and selling. That of course doesn't sound good. In fact, they're painting Warren Buffett to be unethical, suggesting that he's violated Berkshire's policies on at least three occasions. So let's take a look at this report and see how scandalous it really is. So just to be clear here, the accusation against Buffett or the insinuation against him is that Buffett has a personal investment portfolio, his own small portfolio, and he's using Berkshire as a way to benefit his portfolio, which of course is not good. It's illegal to do that. You can't use a publicly traded company that you own and trade ahead or do different things with your portfolio to benefit from that. So that's basically what they're saying. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these biggest accusations here. It was the kind of endorsement most companies could dream of. Berkshire Hathaway CEO Warren Buffett, the legendary investor known as the Oracle of Omaha, repeatedly sang the praises of Wells Fargo. The bank, Buffett said, has come closer to an effective business model than any other bank by some margin. So he's singing the praises of Wells Fargo, one of his investments, and he does that all the time. He's invested in Apple and he's singing the praises of Apple many times. Now, we go on here, they say that the interview was published in 2009, banks were still reeling from the financial crisis, the stock market was turbulent, and Buffett was a kindly white-haired billionaire who had assured Wall Street, the US government, and the public that America would be just fine. That sounds like Buffett. Never bet against America. America is going to be just fine. We'll get through recessions. He truly believes that. That's why he's, he's rich because of America. That's the reason that he's rich, and he realizes that. Now, Berkshire was already, this is when we get to the accusation, Berkshire was already one of Wells Fargo's largest shareholders, and Buffett was so influential that, Fortune noted, he had caused a 20% plus jump in Wells shares the previous month by simply by expressing confidence in the bank on TV. Now, of course, that's that seems totally reasonable. You have a time period, again, in 2009, where everything seemed like it was caving in. This was COVID 2020 March. This was the worst time period. It, it's similar when everyone thinks the world's ending, when everything is going down, companies are going out of business, there's chaos. And then if you had Buffett step in and say, I'm confident everything's going to be just fine. I'm not selling a single share. In fact, I might look at buying stuff right now. That is, that's so confidence inducing that people feel reassured and they need reassurance during those time periods. After the Fortune interview appeared, a similar pattern ensued. Buffett's comments rippled across financial media, eagerly lapped up by the legion of investing fans who followed his every move. By April 24th, Wells Fargo shares had jumped 13%. That day, Buffett sold privately, sold $20 million worth of Wells Fargo shares in his personal account. That is the big indictment. That during all of this chaos, during all of this time, he gave confidence to Wells Fargo, and then he sold $20 million of it in his personal account. Now that's it. That's really the most scandalous part of this entire article. Out of all the claims being made by ProPublica, all the insinuations of him being kind of unethical and trading against the company and benefiting personally, this is the single biggest claim. And keep in mind, a lot of this is circumstantial. We don't have all the information. So they're making these insinuations with very incomplete trading history. We don't know what Warren Buffett was buying at the time, how long he held the shares, what percentage of the holding that he sold. We just know that he sold $20 million worth after the stock went up roughly 30%. So let's say just mathematically, to put this in context, that Warren Buffett benefited around $5 million from this trade 
in his personal account. And that's putting it in the exaggerated way. It's probably less than $5 million. But for the sake of argument, we'll go along with ProPublica and we'll say that he benefited around $5 million. To put this in context, at this time period in 2009, even with depressed stock prices, even with Berkshire Hathaway going down dramatically, he still had a net worth at the time of $37 billion. And again, this is when stock prices were down. Everything was cheap, everything was sold off, Buffett's net worth at the time was $37 billion. So we have the two different numbers here. The $5 million that he benefited from his sale and the $37 billion net worth that he had at the time of the sale. To put that in context, $5 million is roughly 0.01% of $37 billion. 0.01%. Now, I understand that fractions and decimals, they're a little bit difficult to wrap our mind around, so let's just make this a little bit more relatable. Let's say that I'm Warren Buffett in this scenario and I make a proportionate sale on a private account. If I have my $530,000 account and I sold the same proportion, 0.012%, that is roughly $52. That would be the big scandal here, that you have a secret secondary account where you have a $52 gain from a sale. Now that's $52, not $520, just 52. That is the big scandal here. And keep in mind, when your portfolio is this size, it's very regular for the portfolio to trade up or down $6,700 like it is today. It's up $6,700 today, tomorrow it could be down $5,000. So you could see how meaningless $52 would be in the grand scheme. This is not enough to move the needle. It's not enough to care about. Warren Buffett does not care about $5 million. It means nothing to him. And it's certainly not meaningful enough to potentially jeopardize his long-term reputation. It makes literally zero sense. Why would Warren Buffett jeopardize his long-term reputation, his integrity, everything that he's built up for decades over decades for 50 bucks? Or in his case, a couple million dollars when he's worth 37 billion. It does not match his entire history. It doesn't match anything he's ever done. The guy doesn't even spend that much money on himself. He doesn't own that much. He literally hasn't owned that much his entire life. So this makes no sense on a logical level. It makes no sense on a mathematical level. It doesn't make sense with Warren Buffett's entire history. And what we're getting here are little bits and pieces of the truth reported by ProPublica, who obviously has beef with anyone that has a lot of money. They've tried to stir up a lot of hatred towards Peter Thiel. The same thing with Ted Weschler with illegally hacked content. And here they're doing the same thing with Buffett. I'm not saying it's impossible for Warren Buffett to do something unethical. Of course, he's not perfect, and I don't believe that. But given his longstanding reputation under extreme scrutiny and ProPublica's obvious motivation of maligning wealthy people, even though they're doing things legally, I would side more with Warren Buffett on this one until we get a lot more info. So, so far, put me in the basket of unconvinced. I'm gonna have to see a lot more information with a lot more full context than what we've seen so far. So that's my take on this big scandal. Let me know what you think. See you in the next one.